Okay, this is Lantana. This is, uh, I think, Lantana camara. Uh, this is a larger leaf Lantana. There's many different species of this all around the world. This is a subtropical and tropical plant. And uh, it's, it's a verbena. You, when I first learned this plant, about 12 years ago, 13 years ago, when we first moved down here, uh, I thought maybe it was a mint. I didn't know it had the skunky, minty kind of smell, has opposite leaves, square stems, but it's a verbena. And it is a, um, I would say, you know, more than anything, this plant, <laughs> what my experience with it that is incredible as a wound healer, uh, tissue healer, anti infective. Uh, tissue proliferant, anti-inflammatory, even a little bit of an anodyne. It's a, it's a, it's good for topical pain as well. Uh, the way that I normally use it. So it's got little. It's got it's, you know got these little pubescent, actually kind of hirsute uh, type of, of hairs on it. They can be a little bit irritating to some people. Like if you're some people like if they're working in the garden and they're brushing against it a lot, it'll bug their skin. Not not as bad as like nettles. It won't sting necessarily, but it'll cause a rash. So for some people, you got to be careful. It doesn't really bother me that much at all. I mean, if I rubbed against it a lot, I suppose it would. But in general, it's it's fine. Uh, what I'll do is I'll usually take a leaf of this and just break it off, and then I can just squeeze this together. And you'll see, especially you know at this time of year, but really for us about 10 months out of the year, you're gonna actually see, you can see some fluid coming out of here. You'll see some, see that, you know, it's got enough fluid in the leaf by itself. You don't even have to add water to it. And you can literally pack that or put that down on or into a wound, right? So don't do that whole thing of like chewing up a bolus and spinning it on a wound. That's ridiculous. Don't put your filthy mouth on your wound, right? But this, but the, but the lantana by itself without putting any water in there has enough moisture there that you could put it topically on a wound and literally just tape it down on top of the wound. You don't have to put it in the wound, but you can top it on, put it on the wound and, and you'll be amazed at its wound healing qualities. Uh, I was, incre was incredulous when I first saw it because it works as well as Chaparral, which up to that point had always been my favorite go-to for wound healing. And now I found something that works as well as Chaparral. Uh, I thought it was maybe just, you know, a chance, uh, you know, who knows, a fluke, and started using it, started having students use it. We run a survival school, as most of you know, as well, and so we have a lot of people that get cut and injured, you know, just cutting themselves with their knives accidentally and things like that. So I've of, have had a lot of opportunity to use it for, like, minor lacerations, even to the extent that I had a doctor come through one time, an emergency medicine doc, uh, Army, you know, a military emergency medicine doc who was very, very skeptical about any kind of herbal medicine, and he cut himself up pretty badly, and, and he was at least open-minded enough to say, hey, you know, I'm, on, I'm at your school, why don't you show me what you got? And so I went straight to the Lantana and used it. And the next day, the next morning, he comes out of his tent and he's showing me his hands. And he's like, I can't believe, you need to figure out what's in this plant because you'd probably be a multimillionaire. This is incredible. So, it, you know, it's, it's absolutely, you know, I've seen enough empirical evidence on this over the years to know it works very well that way. Now, it's a little on the toxic, it's actually quite a bit on the toxic side. The berries are considered toxic, especially if you eat them raw, but if you talk to folks who really do a lot of foraging and, and, and a lot of experimenting. Um, I know at least one who says, hey, if you cook the berry and then get rid of the seed, you can make jam out of it and it's fine, totally fine when you pick the right berry and cook it. Uh, I've never really messed around with it, honestly. I've eaten a raw ripe berry before, a couple of them actually, and it definitely didn't feel good. I mean, I could tell there was definitely, it's not good. It is a toxic, there's, you know, kind of stories out there in Texas about Boy Scouts dying, eating it and getting poison. I don't know if those are true or not, but you'll, you'll hear those kind of those urban legends, whether they're legends or not, out there a lot. Um, however, that said, uh, one of the one of the traditional uses of this, indigenous uses for it, uh, was to be able to was to use it for uh, respiratory stuff. So I tried doing steam inhalation with this once. Uh, again, same thing, experimenting with it once back in, in 12 or 13 years ago, and uh, was impressed, very impressed with it for steam inhalation for having, you know, just respiratory difficulty uh, that goes along with just, you know, a, a respiratory flu. So then I tried it some more. I tried, and, and so here's what I found, is that it was not as effective, unfortunately, dried as it was fresh. And so then I also started experimenting with it as a wound healer, and it was not as effective dried as it was fresh. So I went through a long, a couple of years of where I was trying to figure out ways to preserve it that worked. I tried liniments with isopropyl alcohol, I've tried, um, I've tried alcohol, of course, I've tried glycerin, uh, but, and none of them really work as well as the plant fresh. And I, and so I think that the constituents in here that work well for wound healing and that seem to work well for the respiratory tract as well uh, seem to be fairly volatile and, and, and don't work as well 
uh, if they are after the plants had a chance to dry. That said, you know, drying it well, drying it, you know, drying it carefully and storing it in an airtight container, it does still continue to work uh, for you for a while, but it just it's got it definitely has a lifespan on it, unlike some of the other herbs out there. Like I was comparing it to chaparral. You can put chaparral in a jar after you dry it correctly and it can you know you can open that jar three years later and it'll still work pretty darn well, but this lantana probably won't.